Thanks for watching Square Type, the channel showcasing easy to follow pop up card tutorials and demo videos. This is a tutorial about the changing pictures or blinds uh, mechanism. I've already done a demo, but um, a viewer asked me to do a tutorial on this um, specifically because uh, there are a number of other. Uh, videos out there that actually do the blinds and changing pictures um, and this is just mine just because I was asked to. So the first thing to do is um, have two sets of images um, and then uh, figure out what size you want that image to be. So I'm going to make mine 8 centimeters by 9 centimeters and then first step is to create the template. So um, I do best when I'm um, working in with this mechanism when I have a template um, what I'm gonna do first is make a frame of at least uh, two centimeters all the way around the image and the image is eight centimeters by nine centimeters so I'm just putting that two centimeter buffer if you need a, a, a larger buffer like an inch or maybe two inches that's fine too go ahead and do that I'm just gonna make mine two centimeters um, thick so here it is, and then you can see that it actually fits inside of that um, image, which is good because I'm going to be using a very small por portion of that image. So now I'm going to decide which way my pull tab is going to be. So I've decided to make it a, um, run up on the side of a, um, the 9 inch wide um, side of the square here. And then I'm going to find the middle of the width of the image and the middle here 9 divided by 2 is going to be four and a half so I'm just uh, marking out the middle and then um, drawing a line all the way down and now I know which way the pull tab is going to go it's going to pull up like that and then the blinds are going to go perpendicular from that uh, pull tab so when you're deciding on how many blinds to make make sure that it's an even number it just works better so I'm going to have four blinds. So since the my image is going to be eight centimeters tall, divided by four blinds is two centimeters per blind. So I'm just going to mark out two, four, and six centimeters for the height of my blinds. Two, four, and six. Now I'm just going to make those lines on the frame longer just so it's easier to see. And now I can cut out the image um, area in the middle of the frame. Um, remember, this is a template. So here I'm using my razor to cut it out. Um, you can certainly use any kind of cutting um, instrument that you have. Um, you know, um, whatever is safest to use, do that. So now that I've got my image out, um, area out, the template is ready. Now I can transfer all of those measurements onto my image. So I've decided to take this part of my, um, my image. Um, this is what I'm going to use as my image. So, I, so now I have my frame drawn out on there. Now I'm going to transfer all of the measurements just on the frame area. That way I don't mark up the actual image in the middle. Okay, so now I'm just going to elongate all of those lines again, just so they're easier to see and also easier to line up with each other. You'll see later how they, be they become really useful when you're assembling the blinds. Okay, so doing the exact same thing on all four images. Remember, you need two, a duplicate of one image and a duplicate of the other image. And then what will happen is the blinds are going to be overlapping on each other and then they're going to slide on top of each other. So here on my second image I'm just kind of figuring out what part of the image I want to use and I've decided on the lower right side of the image. And I'm just transferring all of the measurements again, elongating the lines again, and making sure that when I get to the duplicate I'm going to mark out exactly the same area so that the exact same image will show up when the blinds are cut. 
and they'll overlap and they'll they'll make sense and they'll line up perfectly. So now I'm just trimming out the outside part of the um, the frame. And now they'll all be the same size. The best thing to do now, and this is really important, is to make sure that they're all pointing in the same direction. So the one with all the letters, I know which way is up, but this one with all the patterns, I can't tell which way is up. So I'm going to go ahead and just mark it um, so that I know where the pull tab is. I know that it's pulling up. Um, so I'm just putting arrows all the way down the frame area. So I'll always know on every single blind after it's all cut which way it's supposed to be pointing. There's nothing worse than getting confused later on. So now all I have to do is stack these. Combine opposite images like this into two stacks. Now it's time to cut the blinds. So see how you have five lines? One, two, three, four, five from the top down. You're going to cut, cut the second line. Second line from the top. Just cut straight down like this. And then the fourth line. Okay, that's done. Now the second stack. You're cutting the first line. And then the third line. and now the fifth line. So see how so a couple of them are shorter than the others? The others are one, two, one, two, one, two, and then you got one. Then one, two, one, two, and then one. Just get rid of the ones that are smaller, like this. Just toss them out. Now, uh, um, just kind of line up the image. So this is the bottom of the first, and then the bottom of the second, and then the middle of the first, and then the middle of the second, and then the top. Okay, notice how there's now five sets of blinds, but we only need four. Remove the last set of the blinds from the opposite side of the pull tab. In this case, let me bring that back, my pull tab is going this way see the arrows it's going that way so I'm going to remove that bottom set now separate the images but keep them in order so I'm just going to take the top off of here oops just the first and the second third and then fourth I just want to make sure that these are still lined up so I'm just going to overlap these just so you can see that it does line up and it becomes one image altogether. Okay. Now I can set those aside and I can start making the frame base. So back to using the template, I'm taking some cardstock and I'm placing my template on there and transferring the size of that frame and also the middle line from the top down and then three lines down, I'm transferring that mark also. Now I'm just going to elongate those lines so I can see where they intersect. And then now, um, just marking again where that pull tab is going to be onto my frame base here so I know where, where the pull tab will be. So from where that pull tab is going to be located, or that direction, down to where those two lines will intersect, I'm going to make a keyhole. See that? It's just up to the frame edge and down to that intersection. So just trimming off the sides here, and now I'm going to cut a slim keyhole inside that marked area. So make that um, keyhole as slim as you can, but not but not just one cut, make it two cuts parallel to each other so that it's not too tight. Um, the pull tab lines are like a cover, they cover each other. So the frame base blinds show when the pull tab is pulled out when the blinds are open. Just keep that in mind. 
and then you can choose which image you're going to put on the frame base. So I'm going to choose the words for the frame base and I'm just lining up the bottom of the frame to the picture and pasting that down. Now I'm going to make my pull tab. So with the pull tab it's better if it's more rigid it works better. So I'm just taking two pieces of cardstock here and gluing them together for a more rigid um, pull tab. Now I can glue my um, my top lines to the pull tab just taking my bottom blind and I'm lining up the bottom with the bottom of the pull tab. And then I'm making a mark at the top here so that I know where the glue will stop. So let me just place my glue. I'm just using a plain old glue stick and then I'm centering my pull tab on that image just making sure that it's centered just eyeballing that center looks pretty straight um, and now I can put the next layer on so when I'm overlapping the layers I first use the um, the lines that I wrote on the sides and then I kind of watch the image to make sure that the images line up and make that glue line and then about a centimeter down I make another line to make sure that the glue doesn't go anywhere else I'm just um, putting the glue inside those between those two lines okay now I can um, place the image again making sure that the image looks like um, one cohesive image together okay so just repeating the same steps until I finish all the top lines. There you go. Okay. So now here are the blinds and if you notice you can open it up like this and you can see the layers. And um, with the blinds uh, lined up with each other, notice how if there was something there, the top lines can't shift down. Um, what you actually have to do is narrow the pull tab lines to about a centimeter from the image's edge. So there's the edge of the image. I'm just marking about a centimeter. Actually, this is about 0.5 centimeters. And then making my line, doing the same thing to the other side just making sure that it's nice and narrow from its original edge and making that smaller okay so now you can see that even if there's something glued to the edge here the blinds will still shift up and down perfect Okay, um, you can also trim the top pull tab line. See that intersection where the pull tab meets that next blind? You can just cut that off. Um, I do this, you don't have to do this. I just do this because I think it hides the blinds better behind the picture frame at the end. Okay, now it's time to prepare the frame base blind. So see how the lines all match up all the way around that? Now take the, um, the next blind and kind of shove it in there as far as you can. Make sure that the lines uh, all line up. Flip it over and see where the intersection is between the pull tab and the next blind on the back. Um, just mark that out like this. See that? See? Um, and then what I do is instead of just meeting those lines I'm gonna curve around those lines those two intersections so there's a nice like channel curve um, that's that's where the pull tab can actually um, slide between the images now you can transfer this curve onto the top of all the remaining lines just draw it in and cut it out and see how the pull tab doesn't come off come off the card when I pull as hard as I can that's because there's a key and the keyhole 
and the back. See the keyhole? I don't know if you can see that. Okay, so now I'm making the key. Take a piece of paper and just make a zigzag like this. Then fold one side back to a U. Then zigzag one side of the U like this. Then zigzag the other side of the U so that they touch in the middle like this. And now it should look like a T. Okay, that's going to be your key. Um, so an easy way to attach this is just to slip it underneath through the keyhole and then push it down to the lowest point of the keyhole. Open it up and put glue on the key. Now you can position your um, pull tab. Just make sure that the lines match with the lines on the frame base. See how the bottoms line up and the side lines line up? Now it can slip up and down without coming all the way off. See how the key helps it stay in place? Okay, so now you can attach the frame base blinds. So with the frame base blinds, you have to be kind of careful with gluing it because um, it, the glue can actually get in the way of the pull tab lines. So see this gap right here? And then um, see how it shifts up and down? You want to make sure that the, the gap is still there um, as much as it uh, can be. So just put the glue as far to the edge of the, uh, the blinds as you can. So here I've marked about uh, 0.5 centimeters to about a centimeter in from the side. And see how there's still a gap between that line and the um, shifting blinds? That's what you want. Otherwise it catches on the glue and then your blinds are all screwed up. So um, here I'm just placing my glue on there. Now I can slip this blind right underneath the other blind like this and then press it down. Make sure that the images line up because they're overlapping on each other. And do the same steps for the last two blinds. So it's pretty easy so far, right? You just have to make sure you follow the steps. And then you can do this pretty fast. So see, it's changing images. And the pull tab doesn't come out all the way, so which is great. Okay, now you can make your picture frame. Using my template, I'm going to transfer um, the dimensions of the picture frame onto a piece of cardstock. I'm going to make a couple of alterations to these measurements though. Oops, let me just draw it all the way in. Um, because the marks on my blinds are still kind of showing, they're kind of just on the edge of this frame, I'm going to bring the edges of the inside opening of this frame um, closer toward the middle. So I'm just bringing it in 0.5 centimeters, just marking that out here. And if you notice, I also uh, marked in arrows which way the um, pull tab was going to go, just so I didn't get confused. And I did get confused earlier, but I didn't include it in this video, so I wouldn't confuse you. Just bring in the sides about 0.5 centimeters inward. Okay. So now that it's inward, notice the top of my pull tab lines, it passes the top of the frame. So it's taller than the frame, uh, than my template frame. So I'm going to have to make the actual frame taller. So I'm going to bring it up about 0.5, um, maybe a centimeter higher. Um, I'm using the picture frame as, I don't know, the, the catch-all to hide all the evils in my... <laughs> In my um, design um, because my measurements are never perfect but the mechanism does work and it, it works smoothly so um, I'm not gonna you know um, punish myself too much about this I'm just gonna make my cuts hide it all inside of the the picture frame and it works well so between those two new lines I'm gonna um, cut the top and the bottom of my picture frame 
like that is the inside top and bottom. And then using those new lines, I'm just going to cut out the sides. Okay, so now when I place this onto my frame, all the lines will hide. I'm just line this up. See that? All the marks are hiding behind the frame. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hide that top portion of the pull tab. Just taking a, another piece of cardstock, this will make that pull tab even more rigid, which is good. See that top part there? I'm just going to cover it with a piece of cardstock, and then now it looks perfect. Okay, um, this is optional. In my demo video, I did not do this, but you can add a foam spacer. In this case, I'm just taking a piece of foam and slicing it into these strips and gluing it on, or you can use um, foam tape or even a, a pieces of paper, um, maybe glue dots that are that would just raise that frame up above the frame base. And the idea here is when you put the glue on, this, this glue strip or even just glue, you want to keep it um, only about a centimeter in from the edges because you also don't want those um, pull tab lines to get caught on this glue. So you still want to just keep it really um, neat and tidy just to the edges of the card. Okay, so I did again. I did not glue the top of my frame. I just left that open, and then I'm just gonna, while the pull tab is pushed all the way in, I'm gonna trim my pull tab, and that's it. You can also add a back cover to match the new size of the frame. Just design whatever you want. So this was my easy way to changing pictures or blinds. Um, I hope that you were able to pick up a couple of tips to make it easier for you. Happy crafting! Yay! Let me know if you liked or disliked this video. Leave a comment below. Um, share this video with your friends. Subscribe to my channel or just check out my other videos on Square Type.